All right, a little follow-up on the bike. I was able to uh, clean up the threads on this oil pressure sender. I had the right tap to get in there and very carefully recut the threads. And this screwed in just beautifully and is nice and tight. So I don't see there's any problem there. Um, I'm getting ready to put the first oil in the bike. I usually put in about two quarts of oil, or at least a little more than one quart, for the initial startup. And then once I've run it a few minutes, long enough to set the carbs in the ignition timing, I drain it out and then refill it with clean oil. Uh, just a process to use the first oil to flush out the engine. Uh, right now I'm noticing we have a leak right here. These are our brand new oil lines. So tomorrow we're going to have to get underneath and find out where that leak is coming from. Uh, probably something to do with the brand new oil lines. We'll check that out tomorrow morning. So let's see. Huh. And I think I see it dripping right there. So we'll find out where it's coming from. Oh, from right there. Interesting. Let us pray that it's not from the tank itself. I would hate that. But hard to tell. So I'll put a catcher under that, just like this. I'll catch that oil. Everything's clean. I got about two quarts in there, and I'm not going to let it get away. So we'll check that out in the morning. There's always something. In anticipation of putting the oil in, I um, pulled the sump plug out to make sure that there was no dead oil in the engine. There wasn't, maybe just half an ounce or so. Normally when a bike has been running, um, there's about four ounces of oil in the sump at any one time, four to six ounces. Uh, this only had a little bit in there, meaning that the bike probably hadn't been run since it was um, rebuilt. This is the sump plug filter. It goes way up in here, right in that hole. And I'll show you something interesting. It's very difficult to get a socket under here and uh, put this in. So the best, the easiest way, I'm doing this by feel while holding the camera. Rather than try to get up under the engine with a ratchet and a socket, even a deep socket or a socket with an extension, it's very difficult to get that put in and taken out. Especially taken out because of the philosophy that a lot of folks use that if some tight is good, more tight is better. And it can be really a bear to get to break that free. So what I do is I make life a little easier. Coming over here to the bench. I use a nice big breaker bar with a really long extension and the necessary socket. And when I put this under, I'm not going to do it because it's too clumsy by hand. Well, first of all, this is the uh, oil that I'm going to put into the transmission, MT90. It has a necessary um, uh, Add additives to it to handle gearboxes that use brass bushings rather than um, needle bearings like the new ones do. And I use Valvoline VR1 oil in the engine because once again it has the necessary additives for designed for um, engines that have flat tappets and brass bronze bushings. So these two oils have everything necessary for our old bikes to keep them running better than the new oils that don't have the additives that have uh, needle bearings and things like that in them uh, so they don't need those additives. So these are two good oils to use. Now I'm going to show you this this setup here for removing this and what it does is I lay it on the on the on the, on the lift and put it up under here and it fits right onto that beautifully 
and now I can use the breaker bar to tighten it down. And I can stand out here and take that sump plug out relatively easily. So I'm going to tighten that down and then uh, maybe eyeball that leak a few more minutes and then I'm going to call it a day. So we didn't do a lot today. We had some other projects I had to work on, but some progress was made. And uh, I'm going to get the primary oil in and the tranny oil in and then call it a night. All right, a quick follow-up to the follow-up. Uh, there's oil in the primary. There's oil in the tranny. There's oil in the engine. I've set the bike up for an overnight leak check. I'll come out here just before going to bed tonight around 10 or 11 and double check, make sure there's no major leaks. Other than that, it'll sit overnight to see what happens. I found the source of the leak over here on the oil tank. This fitting right here needed to be given another half turn or so. It was leaking out that and going down the lines and dripping. So I tightened that up. So that's taken care of. And once again, we're all set up. There's oil in the tranny, oil in the engine, oil in the primary. Uh, the only thing left at this point is to put oil in the forks. So the bike is set up for an overnight leak test and we will uh, see how it goes. I'll check it later tonight and I'll do a video tomorrow morning to let you know what happens. Well, here it is. It's 5.30 in the morning. Checking on the overnight leak check on the motorcycle. It's looking pretty good. Nothing drastic, that's for sure. There's a spot right there. I could um, pray the mechanic's prayer of, oh, dear Lord, let that be residual from filling it, but it's probably not. Anyway, that's not bad. We'll see if we can see where that drop came from. Now, this doesn't mean it won't leak when we start it. The bike has not been started. Uh, I probably don't even know when it was started last. And um, so, not bad. We'll see what happens when we start the bike.